Anyway, all right, so this trial score was nice enough to to drain this. This has got, um, it had a thermostat that had failed in it. This belongs to Mr. Brown, Coach Brown, Corbin Brown. Okay, this is the Oklahoma's wife's field goal, excellent. And uh, this one we put the alternator in a week or two ago, and it said check engine light was on, and if the battery light was on, so I kind of thought, oh, panicked a little bit thinking the alternator failed. So it's not an easy one to do. So we, um, brought it in and it was not the battery light just to check the engine light was on. We pulled it and it had um, thermostat code. This has a special thermostat in it. It's right there. Yeah, it's all self-contained. It's got its own little housing and stuff. It's got a spring and you can tell that this is broken off so the thermostat probably just completely dislodged. So it's not going to operate correctly. So obviously it gets no power and it gets no heat. So Mr. Austin was nice to put that in for us. Then we need to put the back in. This won't work unless it holds pressure. So if it can't hold pressure, it's not going to hold vacuum. This instrument that we're going to teach you how to use today uses vacuum. Okay, and it's a great tool, the best tool I think I've ever seen for putting coolant back in an engine. Okay. The problem now today in 2023, you see a lot of engines where the engine is physically higher than the radiator. So back in, you know, like when Mr. Roscoe and I were in high school, you know, we'd dump as much antifreeze as we could get in the radiator, leave the cap off, we'd start the car, and we'd leave, wait for the thermostat to completely open. And because the radiator was so much higher, all the air would escape off the top of the radiator, and we could just fill it. We can't do that anymore because the radiator is too low, end up with an air pocket in the engine. That'll cause the engine to overheat. The brake the blow head gas gets a crack and block and heads and things like that. So you gotta make sure you get antifreeze in everything, okay? So he's had this thing on pressure to 15-ish pounds, on the quarter. So that's probably good. So we need to take this off. So when we go to take this cap off here, do we just go counterclockwise? Or what did I teach you how to get these caps, this pressure tester off without getting the antifreeze all over you? Clockwise, clockwise on the little cams here. So hold this up so it doesn't get any antifreeze in there. Take the cams, go clockwise, let the air out, watch the gauge. If you go too fast, you're still going to get coolant on the floor. By the way, we, we uh, kind of washed the floors today because we had to wash a couple cars. So, all right, we got that. Loosen that up, take that off completely, that. Now, what I've always done, and I explained to you when I did my lecture, let's put that orange, yellow orange thing over here, the greenish thing. What? Well, it's yellow, it's green, it's orange. I was looking at the antifreeze too. It's that orange on this side. It's always been critical. All right is um, if you do a cooling system flush, we're gonna, we haven't done one that yet, we're gonna do that probably tomorrow. I'm gonna do a double kind of every day until we get through all of them. And uh, you push, we get all the antifreeze out of it first, we pull the thermostat out, pressure flush this thing backwards, so we call it a, a back flush. And then you blow air through it, you try to get all the clean water out of it. But what happens sometimes is water gets trapped in the system. So then let's say it takes 12 quarts of, of coolant. So you mix up 50-50, six and six to get your 12 got in the bucket and then you do what we're going to do here we're going to install it all and then you got like two or three quarts left in the bottom and you shouldn't have anything left in the bottom it should use all of it up so what does that tell you what was still left in the cooling system somewhere water so now you've taken two or three quarts of water and you mixed it with the antifreeze it was 50 50. so now is it still going to be the correct ratio now it's got to be diluted with water so now you play this game of draining some antifreeze out dumping straight antifreeze in there to kind of try to get it in the right spot as far as temperature and um, uh, temperature control and things like that, so it doesn't freeze. So that's why I was just put pure antifreeze in there first, siphon that in, then put water in it, and then pull the water in, because then you know you're gonna get the right concentration of antifreeze and water. Got that? Does that make sense? Okay. So the tool here, made by Bluepoint, has, and I wrote on here, three adapters. So it's got this tool here, and I used to have do not push, and then it more often than somebody pushed on, they cracked it. So be careful with this thing, it's fragile. Don't push on the glass. It's just plastic, but you'll still crack it. It's got a little lever here that's closed right now, and that's open. Okay. It's got two hoses in here. When you are done with it, 
you need to take these hoses over to the sink where you wash your hands and rinse these out. Okay, because remember what happens if you mix red and green antifreeze together? What does it turn into? Sludge. Sludge. It turns into the stuff that's in the spam can. It's nasty. Okay. So make sure you rinse those out. It has three adapters in it. So when you first, before you even start to check, start to use it, make sure all three of them are still there. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find out which one of these adapters fits the radiator or the expansion tank. It's going to fit in there. If it fits just a little bit, that's not it. There we go. Okay, so you found that. If it's got an overflow hose that comes off of this, like here, this hose right here, this is what that clamp is for. Feel free to just knock yourself out. Put this on here, clamp this thing down nice and tight. After we're done with this demo, we're gonna push the rest of the cars back in, Laura. Okay. Did you hear me? When I'm done with this demo, we're gonna push the rest of the cars back in here. I'll have more to pick from. Okay. So then um, from there, we're gonna put this in. And if this doesn't wanna go in there, just take a little bit of antifreeze. Get on this part, because the antifreeze has got Lubricant in to make it slippery. Put that in there. Okay, put it all the way down. Notice I didn't push on the top. Okay. And then you're going to turn this part here. You're going to turn that and tighten that up. place for this oil filter. See what the oil filter is in this thing? Oh yeah. <clears throat> that should be nice and tight. Okay. Got this point here because that's going to be the antifreeze. So you can always tell which one goes to the antifreeze. It's got the screen on it. That screen is, you know, suck up dead animals and stuff. And that goes here. The other one, so we're going to use to create the vacuum. Snaps on here. And you put this hose here just anywhere. Out of your way. It's just a bed hose. Flips on there. And then a the regular air hose goes on that end. Like that. So this starts out in red. And it goes all the way to green. The green is where you're trying to go. Green is the goal. It doesn't have to go all the way up to 30. As long as you're in the green, kind of pushing 25, that's where you want to be. So it's 25 inches. So I've got this clamped off here. This is going to be an antifreeze. We'll hold that down there in a minute. And then that's hooked up. Your hose is hooked up here. Just push the button and watch the hoses. You'll see them actually collapse on themselves. That's not what the vacuum is saying. create. How quickly the needle starts to go up. If I let go of the vacuum, it starts to drop. Okay. That means that there's still a, a, a leak somewhere. Hose isn't tight. It's not tight enough to ever house somewhere. But it stopped and it stayed right at about 11. Look at the hose here. That's all flattened down, like pancake. Lower hose does that. The heater hose do that. They all do it. You didn't let all the antifreeze out here, did you? Dump a little bit of water off here. It's sort of got antifreeze in it. You didn't dump, you didn't take all the antifreeze out of this, so. It won't. 
going in there. Yeah. I got two pans on the roof. So you might have to hold the thing for a few minutes, like we're having to. Normally, I don't know if you can hold it this long. Usually, you know, put it up. We're over 30, almost 20 now. Inside, in the very bottom of that five gallon bucket, and open the lever. And when this thing gets to zero, everything will be full. Best system ever. Now, the trick is not to let it suck in air because then you'll have to start over. You have to drain it out, you just got to just revacuum it. See how the hoses are all still crushed? When that thing's all full, those things will just expand, full of coolant. So you won't do this test until you've got your hoses off, back on, thermostat housing in and out, thermostat in and out, belt, everything. So kind of get it all done on one vehicle and then, and then go ahead and um, complete this task. Almost there. So we're going to have um, guests from uh, Schumacher's class. Um, I don't know if it's mural or what they're with their drawing or painting or something, they're going to do cars or something with cars. So, so you can see those students coming through here. You will be the utmost to polite to them. Oh, you'll be shoveling. Shoveling what? Snow. <laughs> You're nice to people. That's what we look like. Why are you nice? I'm always nice to people. When we got them a ball color, they say the step is. All right. What? That's all there is to it. And then when you're done, still not saying zero, but it's not saying you're pulling any more coolant, so. Let's see if there's any vacuum still on this thing. Nope. Done. Okay. That's all there is to it. So when we take this off, I always just leave this open. And then pick this up. Let's cool the back of the bucket. I'm gonna take this right over to the hose or to the sink. Take it over to the sink. Take this off of here. Take that one over the sink, rinse that out. Something out too? No, I was just wondering Push. if that's supposed to get this. Take the fitting off of there, take the adapter off, put it back in there carefully. That's all there is to it. Questions? That's it. Easy task. Cool.